Hi, everybody. It's Joe Chaffee on this Super Bowl Sunday. I thought I'd come here a little earlier because I start a little earlier today because of the fact that we've got the Super Bowl on. And of course, you know, somebody wants to say hi too, although he's being a little shy at the moment. So you can see him. There he is. Say hi to everybody, Kobu. He, uh, he very much is a cat that loves attention, so I try to give him all of the attention he wants, but sometimes he can be a little overbearing with that. Okay, let's see if he uh, winds up uh, making an appearance again while I'm uh, doing this. All right, uh, saying hi to all my uh, YouTube uh, channel subscribers. Uh, thank you very much for being here. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It's free, absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a dime, not a zero. And, um, and you get a notification when a new video comes up, which is usually once a day. Yesterday, I introduced Angry Ben, although I had some uh, technical difficulties. Uh, we will make sure that that doesn't happen in the future. Now, let me just uh, point out that even in the uh, almost all of the worst case scenario patterns that I've seen over a number of winters, sometimes it, it does sometimes try to find a way to do something. And uh, I think that's what we're seeing on the models today. And I'm going to start with the European uh, for a change because uh, being that we're in the middle of the afternoon, I actually have the European run uh, available and I'm not on the road uh, on my way to work. But this is our first weather system. And if you remember, you think back to last week, I, and I said multiple times how I, you know, I, I was really fighting the idea of an intense low in the Great Lakes until, you know, all the models seem to get on that page. And, and guess what? There is not going to be an intense low in the Great Lakes, and that's important because even though it's going to uh, the system is going to become somewhat strong, the fact the lack of a really super strong storm in eastern Canada is going to uh, prevent um, suppression. In other words, uh, a deep a very intense storm here would suppress cold air pretty far to the south. So even if you were to get a wave on a front, it would be so far south that it wouldn't even be worth mentioning. Uh, in terms of the um, overall synoptic view. But um, this is not the case. We are going to have a, a less deep system, so cold air is going to have a tougher time coming southward. It is going to get far enough south, whether, you know, how far south remains to be seen, but it's going to take another wave to develop on that front. And you can see it here on the European, on, this is for Wednesday, and there's a low in on, on this model anyway that pops up in uh, southeastern Colorado and it basically goes east northeast to off the Virginia coast um, by Thursday morning. So this would imply um, snow or rain, a period of snow or rain changing to snow, uh, to snow from uh, Wednesday night into early Thursday morning uh, from southern New England. Uh, on southward into the mid-Atlantic states. Now, whether, you know, how that plays out specifically, I'm not sure. And remember, this could wind up being, you know, if this uh, system to the north the, is a little bit stronger, this could wind up being further south or further north. Those usual those games are going to be played as we go through the week. But I think it's important to establish the fact that it is going to, it is something uh, that we're going to have to look at. Now, I'm going to backtrack uh, and we're going to go to the GFS model because uh, at least from the GFS model, we can see um, precipitation on it. You can't, I, we don't have it available, unfortunately, for the European. And we also only have 24-hour increments of the European, so you can only see what's going on in between. So, you know, we have this cold front that's coming through today that really isn't all that cold behind it, but it just kind of keeps things seasonal for one more day and dry. And then Tuesday, you know, there's your low in northern Illinois. You know, this is not does not have the look in terms of the kind of precipitation you would see from an intense storm going into the Great Lakes. It's just not there. Um, there's a warm front uh, that extends from the low uh, down to uh, the southern New Jersey. You've got maybe some sleet ahead of it, some snow up in, in central and northern New England. You know, they're going to get some in places like Vermont, New Hampshire, and certainly Maine out of this. But, you know, this low just doesn't doesn't cut it. Uh, look at what happens even in, in the uh, lower peninsula of Michigan pretty much goes over to all rain except for the extreme north. And then behind it, I mean, God, you know, what a difference from a couple of days ago when we had a fairly intense low sitting near Detroit and, you know, lake effect snows and all kinds of backside snows down into Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Uh, that's just not going to happen. And then the low pulls away to the northeast. And as far as the rain is concerned in the Northeast, once that warm front is through, there really isn't much 
to work on. Uh, all the energy is just so far north. It's just, just there's just nothing. So we'll have a period of rain, you know, Tuesday into Tuesday night, and then by Wednesday, you know, by early Wednesday morning, it's long gone, and then we start drying out. But you can see the wave here. Here's the trailing front on on the GFS, and you can see it right there. And it makes absolute sense that that would be there. I'm going to switch to uh, another color, so at least I can get a warm front drawn in there. But there's your trailing wave um, that forms. And, you know, this is going to go, you know, right northeastward. At the same time, you've got cold air that's coming back on the back side of that low. So it's, it's, it's got this sort of delicate balance of timing that it's going to have to deal with. And there's your front Wednesday afternoon. There's your wave Wednesday night. You can see why, you know, um, you, you got to be concerned, you know, from a, a precipitation type um, standpoint that it could be you know some rain at the start that goes over to snow and I again I'm not going to make a big deal out of this because of the fact that uh, the kind of winter we've had the um, it, it, this this is in, in no way going to be any kind of big event um, I think at best what you can hope for is that for a snow lover is if we go back to uh, what the uh, run last night did which was to have a fairly well developed wave <coughs> come out uh, for late Wednesday night, early Thursday. But, you know, here's a problem here because of the fact that, you know, the model seems to be a little bit faster in injecting that wave out. So, you know, and, and how much, there's not a lot of time for cold air to get established. At least from last night, there was some time uh, and the low was developed enough that the cold air would have been drawn down. I'm not so sure on this run. Okay, so we're going to have to be, you know, very careful here in terms of uh, expectations because, you know, I, I'm just not... Uh, you know, I'm not overly bullish. I recognize the possibility, but right now I'm I'm taking a very cautious view. And then after that, you know, a high builds in, and, and I think you know the overall pattern for the next week and a half or so is going to be where we have this um, northwest flow. And you know, please, you know, try and bear in mind too that if if models, you know, and I've said this before uh, a number of times. Uh, that if models are going to print out a snowstorm in the long range in this time, you know, at this point, it ain't happening, okay? 99.999 times out of 100, except for the uh, the broken clock is right twice a day theory, w when, when they're on there, they don't happen. So, you know, you can't really look at these things in a literal context. You have to kind of look at them in a really broad sense. And, you know, what I see, and I, 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 I did did bring this up yesterday you know you do have this this um northwest flow that does set up and you know there are going to be uh weather systems embedded in that flow that are going to try and come through and i think the key to the uh, forecast going forward is whether any one of these systems amplifies enough now you see one here this is along right at mid-month on february 15th there's a fairly strong system that's dropping southeastward uh, near, um, you know, just north of Lake Winnipeg and heading into uh, Lake Superior, toward Lake Superior that swings around. And, you know, the question is going to be whether, it, does this trough, is it near the coast or, you know, is the trough axis further west when it starts to amplify? And, uh, you know, sometimes you can get um, a fairly decent system to develop out of that. Um, here we have it now as we go into the 17th and 18th, you know, we still have that dominant flow, but there are changes that the model keeps weather models keep making after around the 18th or 19th where um, it goes to a very warm look toward the end of this forecast period now whether that's a permanent look when i say permanent lasting for more than three or four days or is it going to be a transitory look um uh, a switch that remains to be seen so uh, we are going to uh, at least pay attention to what's going to happen later this week with regards to this uh uh, system on Tuesday, the front that passes by, and the wave that develops on the front. All the models have it in some variation, by the way. The Canadian model, you can't find it on the Canadian model. It actually is there, um, but uh, it, it it just kind of gets squashed. So you really, um, you know, it, it, it's really hard to see. Uh, I'll show you here. You know, it, it, it's this is the energy that's rotating around. It's extremely broad. You can barely find it. And when we look at the surface of the Canadian model, um, you'll see that it, it really barely makes a wave. 
while the GFS did what it did. So you see the uh, it, it's right in here on the Canadian actually, where you see this little batch of precip, and it, it it doesn't do much with it. It just kind of takes it out to the east northeast. And you know what? And that's still could be a possibility here. Um, you know, I, I you don't want to discount it. Uh, because of the fact that because of the certainly it, the kind of winter it's been, you know, if this were a winter where we were getting snowstorm after snowstorm, you would look at innocent situations and they they would all wind up um, producing snow. That's just how it works. And when in a pattern, when it you know when you're in a, a winter where it it's it, it snows all the time, it just basically finds a way to do it. And when you're in the opposite, it finds a way not to do it. And uh, we're not we, we're probably closer to the opposite end of, of, of uh, the, um, the, the patterns I've just described. So you know, overall, when we look across the country, there's more action coming into the West. So uh, that stays busy. Um, we've got this uh, weather system uh, coming across uh, the Great Lakes late next week um, with a trailing front, a little bit of a warm up ahead of it probably uh, next weekend. And then uh, some colder air, a bit of a cold shot, a diving system that right here, um, who knows? Um, the longer term, there's another one that dives down southeastward. So again, what you want is to, what you're going to be looking for is to whether the uh, trough is further west, so these things are diving down into the western Great Lakes and potentially do something here in the east. So I think I think all their poss all possibilities are open. Um, one thing that that doesn't look possible to me is any kind of nor'easter. Uh, we don't we simply don't have the setup for 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 such. Uh, at the moment. So, you know, that that I think I can say with a fair amount of confidence. And one last look, uh, as far as the indexes are concerned, the long term indexes, um, you know, they're not they're not overly bearish for wintertime weather. They're not overly bullish either. So they're kind of in a neutral zone. The Pacific North America pattern goes very strongly positive. Uh, in, into the middle of the month, and um, that is usually a, um, a storm, could be a storm signal there. Uh, but other uh, the other ones, uh, the NAO, again, uh, again, vastly overrated and overstated in my view um, in terms of its its value to the overall um, pattern. Uh, it has its moments, but, you know, the rest of the time it's like, okay, it is what it is. Um, you know, it's slightly positive, trending toward neutral, uh, toward mid-month. Um, the EPO is interesting because we go from strongly negative uh, early this week to strongly positive um, for next weekend, which would uh, be a, maybe a warm-up for a day or two. Then it trends back down to near neutral. So when you see these trends down to neutral, that's probably showing what the model shows, which are these divers coming down and the cold shots. Okay, so I guess my cat decided to stay away from most of this video. He's sitting here actually right to the side of me and uh, being a very good boy. So um, thank you for, again uh, for being here on my channel. If you like my videos, if you're still with me uh, at this point, I assume you do. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. I'll never go to a subscription-based video site. I'm, I'm going to always keep it um, free. Uh, I do have a subs subscription-based app, uh, which is um, on My Weather Concierge, and you can download that on Apple on uh, or on um, on Android, uh, and it's free. The download's free, and the subscription to the forecast for whatever zone you're in in New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania is just 99 cents a month. Uh, you get me, um, my forecasts. I write them by hand. Um, there's no icons. It's not a computer-generated uh, uh, app uh, that gives you forecasts out for 45 years from now. Okay, I cover usually the next five to seven days, and and more intense on the shorter range than on the longer range. So uh, have a great Sunday. Enjoy the Super Bowl. I have no interest in who wins because I'm a Giant fan, and I really don't care uh, whether New England or Atlanta wins. And uh, I've got. Um, sauce on the stove. I made meatballs. I got all kinds of Italian stuff that I'm going to make for myself today. And that is how I am going to spend my Super Bowl Sunday. That and a glass of wine and a good cigar later on. So everybody, again, have a great Sunday. We'll talk to you tomorrow.